Welcome to The Weekly Option, the podcast for people interested in trading stock options. Each week, we cover trade ideas and opportunities in the stock market right now. Whether you're a beginner, a professional, or just curious about options, this is the show for you. Let's get started. Welcome to The Weekly Option. This is episode 313 on March the 8th, 2024. I'm your host, Eric, and in this week's show, we'll cover the trades from last week on Big Bear AI Holdings, Beyond Meat Inc., and Robinhood Markets, and we discuss three new trades on Billy Billy Inc., the China Large Cap ETF, and the ProShares Trust Bitcoin Strategy ETF. Now, it's always great to hear from listeners. If you have any questions about the trades presented here on the show or even about your own positions, feel free to email me. You can email questions to eric at theweeklyoption.com. That's E-R-I-C at theweeklyoption.com. I've also created a few videos to teach you all the basics of option trading that you'll need to know to be able to follow along with me on this show. You can visit our website and click on the videos tab to watch them or visit the YouTube channel for the weekly option. And what a week we had in the market this week. The S&P 500 index experienced its highest price ever just earlier today before slipping down below last week's close. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 364 points, closing on Friday at 38,722 points. The S&P 500 index lost 13 points in the week at 5,123 points. And now it's time for the topic of the week. The topic of the week this week is having a trading plan. It's been a while since I covered this topic, so I figured I'd bring it back around. The rule is to plan the trade and trade the plan. That means having a set strategy that you intend to execute before you enter a trade. That also means having the discipline to actually execute the plan or strategy that you created before you put on the trade. Have you ever planned the trade, then did something completely different because you thought the market had changed? Emotions are definitely part of the trading experience. If you find that you're a good planner, you're really good at planning the trade, but you're horrible at trading the plan, you'll need to find ways to discipline yourself. Being a more disciplined person typically will improve your trading execution and your results. The best part about planning the trade and then trading the plan is that you can measure the results. And if the results are not what you like, you'll need to change your plan. If you only plan the trade, but you don't execute it, you don't have practical experience on the results that you can achieve trading that plan. If you wanna get better at trading, it takes both. You need to plan the trade in advance and you need to actually trade the plan that you created. After that, measure results and make adjustments as needed. It's easy, right? (laughs) So that's it for the topic of the week. Let's go ahead and get into the trading review from last week's trades. And of course, last week, there were only two weeks before expiration, so all of the trades mentioned were a bit riskier simply because they have less time. So we'll start off with the cover call on Big Bear AI Holdings, symbol B as in Bravo, B as in Bravo, A as in Alpha, I as in India. At the time, the stock was trading for $3.35 per share. I looked at buying stock and selling the March 3.5 call at $0.50, which could give us a return of 19.4% in two weeks. Well, shares of Big Bear AI lost 77 cents, ending the week at $2.58 per share. The option we sold lost 40 cents, leaving us with a net loss on the week of 37 cents if we were to close the trade out immediately. Now, I would typically look to roll the strike uh, of that call option that we sold lower in order to take in some more premium. But with one week left until expiration, the strategy I would prefer is to let this option expire out of the money then look to sell another option against it after expiration on March 15th. This will improve the return on the trade even after accounting for the move lower in the stock. The rule of thumb with the cover call is to keep selling options against the stock until you get taken out of the stock. When you're using stock with such low prices, the actual loss on the stock price move is somewhat shielded relative to using like a $50 per share stock. This trade did not win the week, but it'll be just fine in the near and long term as you sell another call option in a couple weeks. 
All right, next up, we have the credit spread on Beyond Meat, Inc. Symbol B is in Bravo, Y is in Yankee, N is in November, D is in Delta. At the time, the stock was trading for $10.69 per share. I looked at selling the March 9, eight and a half put spread at 18 cents, which could give us a maximum possible loss of 32 cents per spread. Well, shares of Beyond Meat fell $2.54, ending the week at $8.15 per share. The out of the money put spread that we sold is currently in the money. The spread is pricing just two cents less than its maximum value, meaning this spread is nearly at our full loss point. And with one week left until expiration, there aren't many good options for altering and adjusting this spread to make a profit. At this point, I would wait a few days to see how the stock price moves and see if there's any adjustments that are possible then. The hope is for the stock price to fall back below the strikes and the put spread. If not, chalk this one up to risky trades at the end of expiration that you just have to keep track of. For those of you who are curious, I priced selling the out of the money call spread against this put spread to create an iron condor like I normally would, but the additional premium you would collect from selling the call spread just isn't even worth adjusting the trade in my opinion. So let's just see how the stock finishes up in a week. And then our final trade last week was a debit spread on Robinhood Markets, Inc. Symbol H is in Hotel, O is in Oscar, O is in Oscar, D is in Delta. At the time, the stock was trading for $16.31 per share. I looked at buying the March 15 half 16 call spread for $0.32, cents, which could give us a maximum gain of $0.18, cents, or that's a 56.25% return in two weeks. Well, shares of Robinhood picked up $0.69, cents, ending the week at $17 per share. The in-the-money call spread that we bought is now even more in the money. And as long as the stock is at or above $16 per share on next Friday, we'll gain our expected return of 56.25%. Not bad for a week's work. No adjustments are needed on this trade at all. So that's it for the trade review from last week's trades. This upcoming week on Friday, March 15th, uh, we'll experience expiration for monthly options in the month of March. All new trades on today's show and over the next few weeks, we'll use the April 19th expiration for monthly options in April. So let's go ahead and dive in with our covered call for this upcoming week. I'm looking at Billy Billy Inc. Symbol B as in Bravo, I as in India, L as in Lima, I as in India. The stock ended the week at $11.13 per share. I'm looking at buying stock and selling the April 12 call at $0.68, cents, hoping for an expected return of 13.93% in six weeks. Now you enter this trade by buying stock for $11.13 and selling the April 12 call at $0.68. Cents. This trade makes the most money if stock prices finish above $12 at expiration. The break-even price on this trade is $10.45 per share. And in real terms, the stock purchase would require $1,113 and you'll collect $68 for selling the option. Next up, we have a credit spread on the iShares China Large Cap ETF. Symbol F is in Foxtrot, X is in X-Ray, I is in India. The stock ended the week at $23.46 per share. I'm looking at selling the April 23, 22 half put spread at 16 cents, which could give us a maximum possible loss of 34 cents per spread. You enter this trade by selling the April 23 put at 62 cents and concurrently buying the April 22 half put for 46 cents. This is a credit spread because we are selling the spread and this trade makes the most money if stock prices expire above $23 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $22.84 per share, and in real terms, you'll receive $16 per spread that you sell and have $34 at risk. And our final trade on the week is going to be a debit spread on the ProShares Trust Bitcoin Strategy ETF. Symbol B is in Bravo, I is in India, T is in Tango, O is in Oscar. The stock ended the week at $31.86 per share. I'm looking at buying the April 30, 31 call spread for 65 cents, which could give us a maximum gain of 35 cents per spread, or that would be a 53.85% return in six weeks. 
Now you enter this trade by buying the April 30 call for $4.15 and concurrently selling the April 31 call at $3.50. This is a debit spread because we're buying the spread and this trade makes the most money if stock prices expire above $31 per share. The break even price on this trade is $30.65 per share and in real terms, you'll pay $65 to enter the spread and your maximum gain is $35 per spread. So that's it for this week's show. Thank you guys so much for listening and for joining along. I don't know if, uh, how many of you are listening to the podcast on Google Play, but Google Play is actually being retired. It may have already happened, being replaced by uh, YouTube Music. And so the show is syndicating on YouTube Music. And for those of you who listen to the show or watch the show using the videos that I post on, on YouTube, let me express an apology. I had about four weeks of not posting. I got that all caught up this week uh, when someone emailed me and let me know that they listened to the show via the YouTube uh, video. So thank you so much for sending that email. I really do appreciate it. You know, when you're recording a podcast in your office or maybe at your kitchen table or something like that, sometimes, or sometimes you guys have heard me record it from a retreat in a on a ranch somewhere in Texas or a hotel room in Colorado uh, just before I go out to ski the next day. So I really do take the show on the road with me just so I can be consistent. But at times you forget how many people listen and there are quite a few of you guys because you keep sharing the show, which is awesome. Thank you very much. But when I'm recording it right now, there's no one sitting across from me and it can sometimes feel like uh, I'm all alone, even though I'm not. I really do appreciate the emails you guys send me. Um, it's great to know that you guys listen and, and that you care. And then you ask great questions. I love that. I eat that up because this is a podcast that's focused on helping people learn to trade. And that's also set up in a way that hopefully some of the trades are actually uh, insightful uh, to experienced traders as well. So the show is not strictly for beginners. And it's also not strict, uh, strictly or exclusively for uh, professionals. So I hope everyone can find a little something. And once again, I'm always, I love hearing from you. I'm always open to suggestions and for being held accountable if I'm slacking, like not posting that uh, YouTube video. So all good now, caught up. Things are uh, rolling forward. I'm getting the website redone as well. So thank you guys for your patience. I know most of you find me on syndication as well, so you don't actually go to the YouTube or you don't actually go to the website, um, but that probably gave me reason to not update it uh, a little longer than I should have. So anywho, all is well down here. Hope you are making money trading. I hope these moves in the S&P 500 have made it fun for you and that you are doing it profitably, ideally consistently. But either way, I hope you're just learning and enjoying yourself in this journey, just like I am. So have a great weekend, and as always, happy trading. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Option Podcast. Please subscribe to our show and visit us at www.theweeklyoption.com. Disclaimer, there is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. The indicators and strategies described in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. For our full disclaimer, visit our website at www.theweeklyoption.com.